Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I want to talk about quieting the noise of everything around us that we can control. So many things in our life we have no control over. So today I wanted to talk about reducing our anxiety by quieting the noise of the things that are out there around us that we do have some control over. And I want to first apologize for my voice. I have a cold or flu that just won't seem to go away. But I wanted to get this episode out to you because this is very near and dear to my heart. And I wanted to start with a quote from William Penn. And he said, True silence is the rest of the mind and is to the spirit what sleep is to the body, nourishment and refreshment. And when I read that, I know from just having a cold or flu here and needing to get lots of nourishment and refreshment for my body, that I also have to pay attention to silence, because that in and of itself is rest to my mind. And that is to my spirit, the same thing that sleep is to my body. So we want to be able to touch into this kind of refreshment and nourishment to our spirit and our mind on the regular. So I want to ask you, When was the last time you had true silence of this sort, where you felt it was resting your mind? It's good to think about because the things that we pay attention to, we will bring more of that into our lives. And so we live in this world that is constantly buzzing with notifications, with updates, headlines, emails, intentionally disconnecting from media might seem like it's impossible or daunting and even counterintuitive because I get it. I love being connected. Digitally is how I connect to you. Your emails to me is how we stay connected. So this is all very important, but it needs to have boundaries. So some of the things in the notifications and buzzing and updates and headlines that we get don't have boundaries. It's very easy to have more boundaries around your email and that sort of thing. But with our phone, what's the old saying? Oh, there's an app for that. Everything is got an app. We're always looking at our phone. We don't even set an alarm clock anymore. It's all our phone. We don't even get out of bed and we're already paying attention to the world of buzzing and notifications. And I think that there's a place for all of this and it is always up to us to find where the middle ground is and how we can tailor our lives to be full and connected and understand the headlines and have the apps working for us that we need, but that we are not being run by them. So even with all of the digital noise, there is a real opportunity for personal growth, rejuvenation, and reduced anxiety through a practice known as a media fast. Why would we be needing a media fast? Well, that brought to mind to me a quote that I love from Henry David Thoreau. And he said, the soul grows by subtraction, not addition. And I love that because I think our modern world is filled with addition. We're adding 
more apps, we're adding more AI, we're adding more audio, video, so forth and so on, even as we are becoming more and more disconnected in other ways. And so I think when we can look at it that way, like, where can I do some subtraction? And that's where the media fast would come in. Our lives are deeply intertwined with media. We're constantly bombarded with information from our smartphones, our social media platforms, often leaving little room for reflection or introspection. And this is the place I want you to get back to. This is the place where your spirit is going to be nourished and refreshed with reflection and introspection. So while media serves as a valuable tool for communication and connection, its overconsumption can have adverse effects on our mental and emotional well-being. We are actually consuming these things. And just as we take care of what we consume with our diets for our physical health, we will do well to be conscious of what media we are consuming for our mental health. Research suggests that excessive media exposure can contribute to stress, anxiety, and decreased productivity. I know we all think we're getting more done, but we're not. (laughs) So moreover, the constant stream of content can lead to feelings of the feeling of the fear of missing out, FOMO, and being in comparison constantly all day with everything, fueling dissatisfaction and undermining our sense of self-worth. Now, this is not the first time you have heard these distressing side effects of excessive media exposure. I've even mentioned it here a number of times, yet I wonder if you have made a concerted effort to free yourself from the dis-ease that may be brought into your daily life by this excessive media exposure. It's just good reminder today to take a look and see if there might be some changes you could make. So if you were going to make changes, what would that be all about? Like, what would the benefits be of going on something as drastic as it sounds, a media fast? Well, first off, by embracing a media fast, you'd be offering yourself many different benefits for both your mind and your body by temporarily disconnecting from digital distractions. You can begin to experience more mental clarity for number one. You would have reduced exposure to stimuli, which allows the mind to finally quiet fostering clarity of thought and enhanced focus. Without the constant influx of information, we as individuals can begin to prioritize tasks and make decisions easier. I know that sounds counterintuitive. It seems like, no, you need more information. You need more pressure on you. No, I would like you to experiment with yourself. Don't take my word for it or any of this research's word for it. Simply give it a try yourself. First off that you would find is mental clarity. And next up would be emotional balance. By stepping away from social media, you could begin to alleviate feelings of inadequacy and comparison, promoting greater emotional resilience and self-acceptance. If you have teens in your home or if you're a teen listening to this, by the way, I had an 11-year-old leave me a review, which I thought was very interesting. Thank you so much for my younger listeners By reducing your exposure to your negative news, you as an individual and the teens and younger people in your lives, if you can guide them along this way also, you can begin to mitigate the feelings of not feeling good enough. The inadequacy and the comparison can begin to die down and you begin to finally get rid of the anxiety and the overwhelm 
fostering a greater self of inner peace that only you can foster yourself. Social media, news, anything from the outside of you cannot bring that. You must quiet down and get there yourself. Now, next up would be improved relationships. Disconnecting from screens encourages meaningful face-to-face interactions, strengthening bonds with loved ones, and fostering deeper connections. Individuals can cultivate richer, more authentic relationships by prioritizing presence over the virtual engagement. And this is also true by engaging more with nature. You would be able to have a better relationship with the world around you as you put down your media and begin to explore with your senses the immediate world around you. And finally, you would have enhanced creativity because you'd have fewer distractions. And when we have fewer distractions, we can tap into our creative potential, exploring new ideas and pursuits. Embracing silence can spark inspiration and innovation, allowing for fresh perspectives and new breakthroughs. I hope that that would be enough for you to want to give it a try. There must be something in there that you would like to find for yourself, whether it be mental clarity, emotional balance, improved relationships with others and the world around you, and enhanced creativity. And if so, let's talk now about how you would go about doing such a thing. Embarking on a media fast doesn't necessarily mean cutting off all forms of media cold turkey. Instead, it involves setting intentional boundaries and gradually reducing media consumption. Now, the key word here is boundaries. Only you can set these up for yourself or If you have teens or little ones in your life, you can help them to set up boundaries also. So let's go through step by step to see how we can begin to embark on a media detox journey. First off, we're going to set clear intentions. Reflect first off why you want to undertake a media fast and what you hope to gain from the experience. This is a great practice for you to put into your journal, whether it's to reduce stress or become more creative or enhance your relationships. Clarifying your intentions will help guide you on your journey. Next, you could define the parameters. So determine the duration and the scope of your media fast. Will you abstain from all forms of media or only specific platforms? Will it be a weekend retreat or an extended period of disconnection? Establishing clear parameters will help you stay accountable. Again, write this in your journal. Next up would be to let others know what you're doing. Inform your friends and family and colleagues. Let them know about your media fast to manage expectations and garner support. Explain why you're undertaking this journey and how they can respect your boundaries. People won't know what you're doing and what you want from them unless you tell them. Next, we're going to unplug gradually. I want you to ease into your media fast by gradually reducing your screen time itself. Start by setting aside specific hours or days where you can abstain from media consumption, gradually extending these periods over time. Next, you could engage in alternative activities. Fill the void left by media with enriching activities such as reading, journaling, spending time outdoors, or pursuing hobbies. Use this opportunity to reconnect with yourself and explore new interests. I'm going to take a little side note here because engaging in alternative activities reminds me of back in 
the 90s when my kids were in elementary school. I think they were both in elementary school. We did unplugging the plug-in drug with the entire school district. My friend Kathy McDonald and I and a bunch of other moms, and we went forward with the school's blessings, the district's blessings, and we unplugged TV for a full week. And the whole crux of this being successful was that we had alternative activities for everyone to do. We had the library and town stay open every evening. We had the school gyms every night you could go and do different activities. We had Legos in the hallways of the schools in the evening where people could build. I mean, the things that went on were endless. But the reality was we needed to have alternative activities ready for filling that void of the TV. I'll talk about that another day in a whole episode because I thought it was an amazing activity. And that was just for TV. I had no idea back then what kind of a world was waiting for us with social media. Now, next up, you could practice mindfulness. Embrace moments of silence and stillness throughout your day. Enjoy those quiet moments. So many times we say, I don't have time for meditation. I don't have time for mindfulness. Well, when you're not looking at your screens, you're going to find the time. Engage in mindfulness practices such as prayer or meditation. Try some yoga, qigong, or breathing exercises to cultivate presence and inner peace. And finally, I want you to regularly check in with yourself. Reflect and re-evaluate. Because checking in with yourself on your media detox experience is going to be your guide. Notice any shifts in your mood, your productivity, or overall well-being. Use this feedback to adjust your approach as needed. Again, all of this is a wonderful place to begin, and you can put all of this in your journal to keep you on track. I would love to hear from you if you guys are doing this. It seems like it would be a wonderful thing to do together. So if you would ever be interested in such a thing, you can send me an email and let me know you'd like to do this as a group with other listeners of the show. Let's see what we could do with such a thing. In a world dominated by constant connectivity, the art of disconnecting has never been more crucial. By embracing a media fast, we can all reclaim our time our attention, and ultimately, our sense of self. Through intentional disconnection, we can rediscover the beauty of silence. We can cultivate deeper connections with ourselves, with others, and the world around us, and embark on a journey of self-discovery and renewal. So are you ready to unplug and embrace the transformative power of silence? I hope you are, and I would love to hear from you if you are. Anxiety Coaches Podcast at gmail.com. And now for today's quote Almost everything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes, including you. And that's from Anne Lamott. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.